Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. I'm Matt Degnan. We are here with another special edition of Wrestling Insiders with all the news, views, results, opinions you can handle. Stand by. Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndorf. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. fans, welcome to a special edition of Wrestling Insiders for the show that really doesn't have a name yet, unlike Wrestling Insiders at Your House, Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty, or is this Wrestling current Insiders edition. Current Events, Current Edition, current Inside edi Edition? Current Era, whatever you want to call it, Current about, Something. Fans, if you have a name for it, how about you give it to us, because I'm very tired. If you heard my uh, rant. thought rant, as he called it, as we open the the Monday Night Raw brand episode that probably aired earlier this weekend. I'm a tired man because of a lot of uh, BS with some legends of professional wrestling, some of whom haven't even made their way to this studio yet. I'm on two hours sleep. Two hours sleep. I'm going to age like one of the presidents. Some legendary BS then. To give you guys the greatest content possible on these shows, I spend my time preparing, outlining, researching, and was up until almost 5 o'clock in the morning, only be awakened by text. A little after 7 o'clock over bullshit, I had absolutely nothing to do with, nor could control, nor could change. It led to texts, it led to phone calls, and in the end, I never went back to sleep. So I'm here on just a little over two hours of sleep. We got this hidden ever so subtly behind Tony Atlas's drawing of Hogan and Andre. The cameras aren't switching right now because Gabe Griff Garrison has gone back to school um, cyberly. I, is that even a word? I, I don't He's know. He's doing cyber school down at URI. We're very proud of him. He really was the one that salvaged our AEW All Out efforts last Saturday night. Klontz is still missing in action. I don't, he might have got impeached at this point. He could be in jail in Glantzville for all we know. They threw him in the can. Big Bad Walter Hillside, I still think, is Mountainside. He has been MIA from the world of technology. I miss my good friend Walter very much because... All reliable, as Walter well Hillside, as we like to say. But we had Wim popping in and out today. We had Howard Miller down here doing his own shoots. It's Cecil the Lion said he was going to be here at 1. It's a little past 3. It's just always interesting with who we're going to see here on Wrestling Insiders. Fill in the blank. But who always makes it? The prodigy. The prodigy, see? A man that I've come to, not even, still a youngin', a man... Okay, you're, you're of age, I'll call you a man, that I've gotten to, to know and respect over the past 15 months or so. And let me tell you something, folks. If you've watched these shows long enough, you've probably come to the impression that I don't like everybody. Do you think that's a fair assessment that's, to make? That might be an understatement. <laughs> and I really do think a lot of this one over here. I don't know about the socks, but it's hey, a work in, project, work in progress. The polka dots? And unlike a lot of people in the world of what you might call independent wrestling, he has a very clean car. You don't see that. If you go into the Glantzville, you know, you'd think oh, you'd man. be looking at Detroit in the late 70s. You know what I mean? I might be Detroit of 2020, <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> but anyway, here we are again. We're going to talk more about the king of sports professional wrestling. Hopefully we can either entertain, invigorate your mind, or depending upon the time of night, help put you to sleep. It all depends on your point oh. of view. What do we got? You don't want to put him to sleep too much. Uh, Britt Baker is still not cleared for in-ring action and is still <laughs> recovering from her injuries. Oof. That's why during that tooth and nails Oof. match, it was well, more, as AEW claimed, it was cinematic, even though they had two cameras in the dentist office and made nothing cinematic about it. But I don't know why, I said it before, I don't know why that match opened up the show for All Out. My imploding trying to get the cyber stream to work was cinematic. It, yeah. But thanks to Gabe Griff Garrison, who may or may not be the real Griff Garrison, we were able to get that stream going at some point. Never seen him in the same room before. I've never so. seen the two of them together. Uh, Tony Schiavone confirmed on the AEW All Out post show that the new show on TNT will air by the end of 2020. What do you think about AEW adding a second show? You really want to know? Is it overkill? I think so. 
It's overkill so. way too soon. They just got their TV deal not even a year ago. It'll be 11, it's 11 months now. So it hasn't even been a year, and they're already going to add a second, sh technically a third show, because they have um, AEW Job or Dark on Tuesday nights. And that's fine. That's an enhancement type show. I don't have a problem with Doc. You know, even though WWE was close, it hadn't even hit its peak yet, you, those that know the industry well knew the death nail was coming when they started SmackDown Weekly in August of 1999 because it was overexposure. If AEW wants to somehow go the route of Raw and SmackDown and have two separate rosters, now, I don't know if that would be a bad thing, but that's on paper. If you look at the reality of it, and I've said this many times about AEW, they deserve a tremendous amount of credit, whether you like it or whether you hate it, for a company that is virtually brand new to have found the success that AEW has had with Tony Khan, Cody Rhodes, and others that helped run that organization. It's amazing what they've been able to do from scratch. At the same time, if you watch the quality of that product week to week, you usually find one or two stellar segments that are excellent, very, very good. You have a clump of guys that I would classify as green, and then you have some stuff that are on those shows that don't belong on national television. If you're going to try and multiply that times two, I think it's going to take away viewers from one of them, and I don't know if it's going to help the second one. That's one man's opinion. I have all the hope in the world that AEW is going to continue to grow and improve, as they're able to make more and more solid roster additions, maybe eliminate those uh, that are in the, the green stages, give them a chance to work the AEW doc mm -hmm. YouTube show exclusively. I don't think putting talent on TV that isn't ready is a good thing. WWE, over the past 20 years, has hurt many careers by putting guys on TV that aren't ready. And fans aren't dumb. They're smarter than ever thanks to social media. They have ways to interact with each other like never before. And I don't think it's a good thing for those physical bodies to be put on that national platform if they're not ready to excel on it. One man's opinion. And the thing I hope for the best. I hope everybody's making money. I hope more jobs are created. If they hiring, I love Jacksonville, Florida. And the thing is, they don't have enough stars for one show as it is. As you said, they have a lot of guys that are green. So if you take away all those guys that aren't really TV ready... What are they left with? Yeah, you're left with a good group of guys, but enough to do two shows, unless they do two shows, one roster. But then again, that's still overkill for the guys who are going to be on both shows because you're just overexposing them. Then you got people who possibly could be on three shows a week because you might have someone do Dynamite, Dark, and the third show that they might introduce. I don't think someone doing a squash match or an enhancement match on Dark is going to take away from a quote-unquote A show like AEW, I'm not saying it would Dynamite take away. I'm just saying the if they add a second called. show. But, I mean, I don't, if you told me Jericho was going to wrestle on Dynamite and he was going to have an enhancement match on Doc, to me, that's a shoulder shrug. Because it's on YouTube. It's not like yeah. it's a TV show. And, and they're not, in the beginning, they kind of had some more feature matches, but nowadays it's primarily enhancement in mid-card matches, and that's fine. As long as you're not taking the marquee players and overexposing them in competitive matches multiple times a week. That's when they get overexposed. That's what hurt WWE so much. And to be fair, WCW long before WWE went with that format when they started both Nitro and Thunder to go along with the original WCW Saturday Night, which was two hours long. And then I like it on Tuesdays because it gets it's a little teaser for Wednesday night going into that. It's nice. Yeah, it is a nice setup that they have. And I also like the fact that I think the weekends of the pay-per-views, I think they do it on Friday. Doesn't Doc air on Friday, think, the night on pay-per-view weekend? I believe so. I don't know if this was the first time they did it where they did a dark on Friday. But no, then, I think they've done it a couple of times. But then I know yeah. next week there's actually going to be two episodes of Dynamite. There's going to be a one-hour episode after the basketball game, and then there's going to be a two-hour episode the next night. I'm sure there'll be many fans that'll enjoy that. I, don't, I guess so. I'll have to try and make sure you remind me to oh. tune into these episodes. I'll remind you. And then as we get into our next piece, uh, Rey Mysterio turned down a huge offer from AEW to stay with WWE. As I said, I think I said on the last show that they matched um, the offer that WWE gave, to Rey Mysterio, WWE gave to Rey Mysterio, and he turned it down. I mean, it's pretty smart. I mean, why jump to someone or something new when you're that Well, old? I think it, with WWE, there's more avenue streams. There's more revenue streams. There's more different ways you can 
grab and make a buck. You know, we, we talked on one of our other episodes about the nonsense that went on with the, the third-party social media affiliations with YouTube and Twitch and things like that. But you know, WWE has so many different media revenue streams. It is ridiculous. Again, AEW has done great for itself for a company that's only been on national television not even a year yet when we're taping this. They debuted on TV in October, but they don't have the, the global outreach that WWE has at this point. Rey Mysterio is much closer to the end than the beginning. Plus, hmm. you got to think big picture. Forget about Rey. His son wants this business bad, too. AEW is, has done well, but it's not a proven commodity that has been around since the early 1960s, as whatever version of WWE has uh, since that incarnation. I, I think Ray was very, very smart to do what he did, even if he wound up making less than we could have received from AEW by staying with WWE. One man's opinion. Yeah. I had to do a Ray's lot. Ray's made a lot of money in his career. I had to do a lot with his son too. Him That's exactly him in the what business. I mean. I don't yeah, think he'd want to. He he wouldn't want to make WWE that. an unwelcome place. Because believe it or not, once or twice over the past fifty years. WWE's been a little petty about things like that. A little petty, and I don't think that's been once or twice. Well, They've been petty. Once or twice. Yeah. And then another WWE star that did jump over to AEW, who was released back in, you know, the springtime, was Rusev. Or now who? We, Rusev. Who? Or Miro. Oh, okay. I know that guy. Yeah. I got great signing. Totally underutilized by WWE. But well, he's getting underutilized already. Why uh, do you say that? He debuted as Kip Sabian's best man. Are you kidding me? And he, did you see how uh, Miro was dressed? He looked like an eighth grader on the first day of school. He had sweatpants on, sneakers. Did he? Uh, he had sweatpants on? Oh, he had sweatpants. Miro? Oh, yeah. He looked like a clown out there. He looked like an eighth grader that was going into math class. You know, it was funny. When you know, they did the shot when he was walking out of I the I thought tunnel. it was Scott Steiner. No, I thought it was that guy that was involved in, I don't know if they called it, the Nightmare family that had the eyeball on his head, Luther, I think. Oh, Luther. I thought, so, that guy? And then I <laughs> realized from the front who it was. I I'll thought it was Scott Steiner because of the, um, like the bleached hair, and he looked pretty yeah, big. Yeah. So I, the first thing I said, I said, holy shit, why is Scott Steiner on Dynamite? No, I tell you, I think Kip Sabian is someone that is not there yet, but I think he has the potential to be there if he could just get a little thicker and get a little bit more solid. I think he's got a, a world of potential. I like him um, as well. I don't know if it's a long-term pairing that they're going to go with with Mero, but Mero is someone that was always much more well-received by the fans than he was presented by at WWE. And they, I, it's a sad lost cause because that's someone that could be... Is Rusev, would he have been a, should he, could he have been a main event guy in WWE? For sure. I don't know if I'd go that far, to be honest. Our but top definitely mid -carter. an upper mid carter absolutely. If you were, and I think you were there on your own, WrestleMania weekend in New Orleans, Rusev took that weekend over. If you were in the streets after these events, tens of thousands of people running up and down the streets near the uh, Super, is it the Superdome in New Orleans? Yeah, Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Superdome. Mercedes-Benz Superdome, and what was the arena next door called? Smoothie King. Sm that's right. Smooth I had some issues with the Smoothie King oh, Center. Oh, here we go. Another rant. No, don't even get me no started heat, brother. on the no Smoothie heat. King no Center. No heat, brother. The Superdome treated me with respect. The Smoothie King Center did not. Oh, I not. think I remember this. Oh, you've heard that? All right. You left to talk to the little Dutch boy, Wes Simcoe, as he had no, to live it. No hikes for me. But, um... Rusev Day took that over and around the convention he did. center with and, the fan access. And then and the response that he got when he opened up the 2018 Rumble with Finn Balor. When Aiden English came out and, and then people realized it was Rusev. <laughs> it was in Philadelphia, the oh, 2018. Yeah, loved it. Loved it. Yeah. It was a great one. Good worker. But no, I mean, you just can't say that that smart fans having fun in the moment. Those were fans from all over the world that were in love with Rusev Day. That's a, he, and they didn't want to... Uh, why don't you want to capitalize on that just because it isn't your idea? Some of the best ideas that we've ever had here in Boston Wrestling and in the MWF with our live events haven't necessarily come from me. Come or from one the mayor. Of the other, well, he's come up with some great ideas for the social media and the YouTube, to be fair, even though Mayor Glantz of Glantzville continues to be missing in action. But I love when talent comes up with creative ideas on their own. When people talk... When people communicate that are actually wrestling people, as opposed to some of the uh, hired guns that are labeled as the quote-unquote creative writers, 
Great things can happen. Rusev, Rusev Day was organic. Um, I knew as soon as they split him with Aiden English, it was going to be the death of him, like it was when they split Miz with Sandow, and it was the death of Sandow. They always are in such a rush to split people, they, have the, they come up with the idea at point A, they don't know what to do at point B, and they never even get to point C. And that's been the case with so many WWE splits over the past 19 years, it isn't even funny. And then look where Aiden English is now, too. He actually, well, I, I can say that. He contacted us about coming in. Yeah. I don't know if Miro Day has quite the ring to it, though. Unless maybe we bring in Mark Miro. No. Met him before. Former WWE Intercontinental Champion. Yeah. Um, another Man that enjoyed Sable's womb. It, yeah. Another friend of ours, Matt Seidel, made an appearance on Saturday night well, in the Casino Battle Royale. Luckily, he wasn't injured. I was very happy about that. Matt is a good guy. Thank the you. The main oh, event him. on the, the one we actually like. It has value. Um, no, main evented for us back in December here in the Millennium Wrestling Federation. Great match you can see here on the Boston Wrestling Sports YouTube channel when he took on TNA current superstar, former WWE Cruiserweight champion TJP one-on-one. -on -one. I wouldn't be opposed to seeing Matt back here in the MWF, but as the fans that watched the pay-per-view saw, that was kind of nasty. That was a nasty, but his right foot slipped and he just went down. And I'm surprised he wasn't injured and then Matt Hardy. I'm, neither of them... Had any major it was almost as rough as me getting out of the jeep today. <laughs> the ankles were sore. <laughs> we're at Dollar Tree standing in line for well, about... It was all those beautiful women I was distracted by. Yeah, a bunch of tens over there. But I, do you think they should sign Matt for on a long-term deal? If I'm a wrestling promoter right now, unless I'm WWE... I'm going to be leery of signing just about anybody to a long-term deal. You just don't know what the ramifications of a coronavirus-filled wrestling world is going to be. Granted, TNT has given them guaranteed money for several years now, which is a good thing. But you know what? Why not test the waters and see if he fits? I like the idea that they've done with some of the guys. We give them, I don't know if five dates is long enough, but maybe... Yeah. A 90-day contract, just well, to see thing, how it like, works out. Rusev's, his contract is about a year, a little over that. So kind of like a feeling out process. Like Moxley, he signed a three-year deal, but the first year he had a, uh, an, like an option. So if he didn't like it after the first year, he could have opted out, and the other two years would have went away. And a lot of these guys, they have handshake deals, like Zack Ryder, Matt Cardona. He just renews it. Every, he just gets paid every week basically and it's just a renewed handshake deal like the revival had at first i don't even know if they've signed yet if they gave them the tag team titles i couldn't imagine that they well they gave the deal. uh impact gave diana perrazzo the woman's title and she, how many people have just thrown the impact titles in the recycling bin like tessa blanchard did i where do you think she yeah, ends up as started we, with impact what's that where do you think tessa blanchard ends up wwe well nxt she'd go first you aew want to know the truth and I've met her one time personally when she was with Ricochet, and she was very nice. But if the story about how she just kind of shrugged her shoulders at not dropping the Impact title of truth, she can go fuck herself. Well, that too, because she was in Mexico. Why would you trust her? She was in Mexico with her, well, now husband, and they asked okay. her to do some promos for the show, and she didn't even send them in, and that was that. And then they asked her to come in, drop the title, and she said nope, and then that was... That was the now, end of her. Now, there are two sides to every story. Maybe there is a side to her story I don't know, and maybe I shouldn't say she should go fuck herself. But you know what? If a company is going to go that route to make you the face of their company, defeating men is their world champion, and you won't even try and cut some promos and come back to drop the belt, if that part is true and there's no, you know, if, if she was owed money or something like that, okay, that's a different story for a different time. But if the story is how it's been presented is true, Go fuck yourself. Like Ricochet did. Well, that was just his finger. But. <laughs> well, he still got something done. And then another woman's uh, superstar wrestler, Thunder Rosa, passed on a WWE tryout last year as a referee. You know Thunder Rosa? Lover. Lover? Good worker? Yeah, good worker. Yeah. Uh, another woman's wrestler, Tay Conti, formerly of NXT, officially signed with AEW this past oh, week. Oh, that was a fantastic match. Fantastic. And then we'll go, we'll go to the men now. Had on those tight jeans. Yeah, well, I don't get that image out. John Moxley will defend the AEW title against Lance Archer on October 14th 
at the AEW anniversary show. And then there's been some talk that the rival show to that is going to be Halloween Havoc. The AEW anniversary show. What's the date of the NX, uh, the AEW one? What, oh, the... It's the first the, Saturday in November. I believe and so. And they moved NXT from Survivor Series weekend, I think, to the Sunday night. So they'll be back-to-back -back days. But, yeah, there you That'll go. That'll be a busy weekend here with our live streams. Much like a few weeks before in October with Hell in a Cell and um, Bound for Glory. Yeah. We've got so much going on, we can't even keep track of it. Yeah, and UFC as well. Yeah, well, yeah, but that who like do you think goes right. over in that match, Moxley or Lance Archer? If they go the route of putting that title on Lance Archer, they should go out of business. But Lance Archer's got a good look. Jake's a good promo, but, I mean, is he a guy that you want as the face of your company? I don't see it right now. I, I would see him as like a holdover champion. If you, No, not like holdover for months. I'm I would just, call that Halloween Havoc because it would be scary. I just, he's been no, I'm a, just saying, someone who could hold the title for like a month, give it to him, and then drop it, something like that. He's been, a, he's been like around Like if there's an injury type of thing. He's if, been around mainstream wrestling now for, my God, longer than you'd think since... 2005, 2004? Yeah, probably about 15 years. You know, he had a very, very brief cup of coffee with WWE after his TNA run. Nice guy. I just don't see him as a... And it's not a knock on him. It's just not everybody is meant to be the world champion in the face of your company. I, I could think of 10 guys in AEW that I would want to put that title on before him. I would think if they were going to go for that quote-unquote placeholder champion for a brief run, I'd put it on someone new to try and get, a, you know, a, a guy that hasn't had much national exposure to give him a little bit of rub as opposed to an also-ran that has been around, has done it all, has seen it all. You've seen his peaks. You've seen a lot of valleys in between. It's great he has Jake Roberts. It's great that he has some size. But would I have him go? I, I think that's a very predictable main event, in my opinion. Have Mo One would, man's opinion? I would have Moxley go over as well. I don't think Archer's ready to be a champion yet. I think he needs a little bit more. You know. well, and considering he's about my age, I, <laughs> I don't know if that time is going to come. No, I'm saying he's not some more. I'm saying more that, I know that, but he's still new. You mean in that company? In that company, okay, yes. Okay. He's still new to that. He hasn't really done much other than what losing to cody at double or nothing for yeah. no real i thought he was going to win that see that's a title i could see him having a long run with but brody lee's got it and i'm sure he'll have it for a little while and speaking of cody rhodes he's been away from aew to do his new show called go big show where he will be a judge announcement was made during dynamite this past wednesday I thought they did a great job tying it in to make people think it was thought, a wrestling show. But the thing you was, were one of them, I think. But the thing was, they made it seem like Cody was going to announce something about AEW. It was and, a great tie-in, and it was at the. It was very. Smart. It was at the end of the show. I thought it was a good way. You were Giuseppe in. But the what? I don't know. The way they did it was good, but for wrestling fans, it's you got blue balls from it because everyone thought it. How many announcements has AEW built up and have it just be what? I don't they, want to they do a lot of announcements, but then, hey, you know what? In 2020, what wrestling showed isn't filled with announcements. Oh, I know that. I'm just saying, well, you've got to build your own product. Every announcement's big. But, but the, when you overhype them every yeah. week as if it's the biggest announcement in wrestling history. I, I even said it. I said, this is going to be a letdown. When every announcement starts to be a letdown, people are just going to be like, oh, they got another announcement tonight. And they're not even going to watch it. That's the thing. They kind of lost me when J.I. was saying after the show tonight. I didn't know if that meant... It was going to be on social media or? Yeah, because it was right at yeah. like 9.57 yeah. they again, made the announcement. Great tie. It was good. Whether it was a TNT idea, a collaboration with AEW, it was a good tie-in. I don't know if I'd ever watch it, but yeah, I watched the promo and for it. Do you think the big show is going to be on it? I doubt it. Okay. The uh, viewership for Wednesday night for AEW was over a million. It's pretty good. Have they gone over a million since early October last year? No. So, you know what, that is impressive. I'll say this. Number one, it was unopposed. Number two, well, those that watched uh, during the Monday Night War eras, you know what, any time you were coming off of a pay-per-view, you should get that bounce. The fans should want to know, number A, if they didn't watch it, they should want to know what was going on if they watched the show even semi-regularly, or B, 
if they did watch the pay-per-view, they should want to see what the ramifications of the big event are. So am I surprised it bounced up? Nope. Am I surprised that it did a really big number as they had no competition? Nope. It would have been a big disappointment if it didn't. Well, as we transition, I actually just want I have this at the end of my notes, so I'll do it now. The thing is, NXT viewership actually went down from last Tuesday. Super Tuesday 1 had higher viewers than Super Tuesday 2. The sequel it, it did, is never going to do as well as the original. It did 838,000. I expected it to go down, but it's just funny because they wanted to build up the next week by doing a rematch of Cole and Balor, never done before, da 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 you know, who's finally going to get the belt. Then they added a steel cage match in there. And, and here's why I think that was successful. I think it would have dropped even further without a big appeal to it. And another reason I think it could have done a lot maybe stronger than, maybe not a lot stronger, I think it would have done a stronger number if they put the championship match on last. I would do the steel cage to match open. to open and then end yeah, with I, the title match. Or you could do the steel cage match as a transition segment through the hours. I didn't have a chance to look at that steel quarter cage by match. Quarter breakdowns, but if, if I was booking it ahead of time, not knowing what the rating was going to be, I would have put the championship match on last. Championship should always go on last, and that's the thing with WWE. Sometimes the WWE title is not, it should always be the main event. Any world title, any big title, I guess you could have in a company, because some of them aren't world titles, always have them on last. I would never, I know you're trying to get a ratings pop in the beginning of the show to keep the viewers there. I, you just never have it open a show, especially. Like what they did, I know Brock wanted to leave WrestleMania early last year, but when they had the Universal title go on first in New York City. It, 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 a lot more went into it than Brock wanted to go home early. Oh, he wanted to go home early, okay, I'll tell you that. Giuseppe. He got on a plane and he was out of there. Thanks, Giuseppe. Uh, Mercedes Martinez is expected to head to the main roster after losing to Rhea Ripley in a steel cage match on Tuesday night. Is Retribution next? As we said before. At her age, I wouldn't spend too much time in NXT. And on Retribution, I'll tell you that, because she was one of the people under the hood. Um, you know what? I, it very well, she could be part of that faction, or it just could be a red herring to try and get people on the Internet talking that that's who the faction members are going to be. Until you see the masks come off, that's I guess you really don't know for sure who they're going to be. That's the thing, because they don't even know who they want to put. You could put anybody at this point under those I, masks. I, I think a year from now, Retribution will be forgotten. <laughs> I, I'd give it I'd give it to WrestleMania. Maybe a big like... I, just, I don't know what you do with it. And one thing WWE does not do well is introducing big clusters of people at the same time because it turns into a cluster eventually. But we'll I, see. Knock on wood, I hope for the best. I hope Retribution is a big success. I haven't liked it thus far at all. I, I think what you might see is like a Nexus type of thing where they have like a leader come out, like a whoever it is, the leader, and then and have that them... That lasted, what, six months? Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then, Next, but I mean, Nexus, oh, no, didn't they, what did that go, about six months? However long it was. And then have like a leader come out, like a heel leader. And then, how, remember how they went after Cena? Then they had those series of matches between Bear and then Cena joined them, and then they did the whole thing going after Orton in the title. I could see them having like a big heel come up, have them target Keith Lee or something like that, because he's a baby. I don't, I'm just trying to think of a top baby face. Drew McIntyre. Um, no, I mean, you're, you're going with all the right players. It's just the, the players themselves. You know, talking oh, I'm not about saying the, it's good or anything. The 2004 I'm just, Red Sox, you know what I mean? No. <laughs> I'm just saying that. The roster, no, I mean, my just, the reason my reaction was not that your idea was bad. It's just the roster is so thin. But the thing is, know? it's not even my idea. It's just I'm predicting what WWE would do in their eyes because you know they're going to have some bullshit leader come out. It's going to be... People are going to hype it up. It's going to be CM Punk or something like that. And then it's going to end up being... CM Punk was behind it. That angle will have a lot of steam. But I would be blown away if it was CM They're Punk. They're going to have like Mustafa Ali or something like that lead the group. Well, and then... Yeah, and then, then the wheels come off. So or, I, I think only three wheels are on it right now. But... It just the whole angle defies common sense to me. First, they attack the building from the outside. Then they break into the building. Then they break into the ring. Then they break into the locker room. Then all of a sudden they take over Thunderdome television sets. Then they get then promos they get their own on logo. the show. It's just, I don't know. it's just there's no 
common sense to it. They've called this the reality era before. What reality is there to any of this? If any of this was even remotely trying to be presented as something truthful, how the hell would these people be able to access every arena, every venue, every locker room, every TV show? And that's just another reason why people say, you know what, that was interesting for five minutes. Bullshit click to the next channel. And then the thing is, if I'm a wrestler in the WWE, mm -hmm. in reality, in kayfabe, wouldn't I know, there's like a locker room of 40 uh, guys. I know, and they're and all... six. And retribution people. That's the thing. And how can you just go through your matches, go through your promos, and not give a shit or even mention them at all? That's the thing. You could just go about your business. To me, the announcers what, run, but that's about it. What? The announcers when they. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, <laughs> you spilled your drink. Oh, did? Oh, shit. I did fuck up. Retribution. <laughs> they took over the studio. Oh. What the thing is? That monster was more valuable to me than retribution. But that's the thing is, how can you go through a show and be fine? But the thing is, what I would do is I would get all the locker room guys together and protest it like you're protesting an NBA game and go out there and stand in the ring and call out retribution and say, we're not going to go through with the show until you guys come out here. And that's that. How can you just go through a show knowing these guys are trying to sabotage? Or you could have guards set up, have some people of the roster at the production truck, some people at the entrance to the, you know, gorilla position, and then some people around the ring to fend off retribution. It's why retribution. no one takes anything seriously, and it's why this industry right now is unfortunately in the popularity level that it's in. And retribution is not the answer to try and change the problems. It's, is it an interesting attempt? The first week or two... It was a little different, but as I've just described, week in and week out, it's just mind-blowing how unoriginal and un unrealistic that it is. And the thing is, everybody who's in the group is like 5'2". For you know, a they while, had to, it was some small people. And then they, then had they to, get bigger overnight. But then they threw they in Dominic Dijakovic and uh, yeah. Dio Madden to up the size. Uh, moving on from Retribution, who we keep shitting on, uh, WWE is renovating and remodeling the Performance Center. The talent is currently training at a nearby makeshift facility. They are. I know that is a fact. Well, what they do with the Performance Center, I, I don't know how you can improve upon it. I, I, don't know what, I don't know if damage is the right word, but I know it had to be reconfigured to try and turn it into a, a wrestling arena for the TV shows. But I'm sure when WWE goes about their ways of doing things like that, It'll be first class, top notch across the board. That I have great confidence in. Well, maybe the reason why they moved up the Hell in a Cell pay per view for a week, maybe they're um, making the Performance Center bigger to put the Thunderdome in there, and they'll go back. I'm, I know. I know. It, they they have wanted out of the, that environment I know, for a I, long time. I know they time. have. I'm just saying, as a possibility, shooting it out there. It's not my prediction. It's just something. No, put that bullet back in the gun. Right. Oh yeah, well. I'm just saying maybe. Put maybe the holster, they, baby. Maybe they're going to the Amway Center for the time of the remodeling and the renovation, then they go back there, they don't have to pay to run their shows, and then they put the Thunderdome in there. They want to be in a real arena. They think that's why the ratings went down. Oh, I know, I know that part of it. I'm just saying, you know, an idea. It ain't happening. All right. Well, Finn Balor took the title. Well, he actually regained the title from um, no one as he beat Adam Cole. Did you watch that? The opening, I don't even want to talk. I did. It was, was an very opening, happy. it was an opening match, which I don't like, as we said before. Very seldom do I watch a show, and I'm actually happy watching it. So That's a good man to hold that championship belt. I have all the respect in the world for him. A man that competed here in the Millennium Wrestling Federation, Boston Wrestling Sports. The last time that him and I dined together and enjoyed an adult beverage at the world-famous Kowloon Entertainment Dining Complex, he said, you know what, Dan Marotti? The next time I see you, you and I are going to have a race. And you're going to win. I think if Finn had both of his legs amputated in 2020, he still might beat me. Yeah. But I, I mean, I figured Balor would win the fatal four-way, but then when everyone heard about, you know, the tie and then the next week and whatever, it still figured Balor would win. Who do you think he works with next? I really don't think there's that many people. I th hey, you get Tommaso, I, you I, get Gagano, That's the thing I was just about to say. Probably I think the four that he was in the match with. I think his next feud might be with Tommaso. I, it's just it's Gargano, Cole, and Champa. Overkill for the past two, uh, 
almost three years that those three have been holding the title or been in the title picture. It's just been such overkill with those three that they either need to go to the main roster or just take a break. I don't, I don't know. I just I can't stand the same three guys that are either holding the title or fighting for the title. It's just very boring. Feels like the main roster in NXT right now with the same people going after titles. Then you got Timothy Thatcher going after the North American Championship next week. And he's, what has he done so far? He's only lost matches. Didn't Velveteen Dream beat Finn not too long ago on TV? Usually that's a red herring that they're going to be in the hunt for a championship if you beat the champion before they get the belt. But I, I, I don't even remember the finish to the match. I know I'm they try, I was, I'm think, trying to... Th I'm trying to think of the finish. But hopefully that piece of garbage isn't because I know Dream was in, near TV. Dream was in the ladder match, and then Finn Balor faced Timothy Thatcher. Then he beat him. Now suddenly Thatcher has a title shot for the North American title, even though he's going to lose to Damian Priest. But I don't know. Wednesday nights can't get any hotter, baby. Well, yeah, they're real hot. But that's it for my notes. All you know is that before it's all said and done, Beth Phoenix will go. Ooh, I, I, as I say before, and then I ah! live, this is going to be a ferocious battle. It's going to be a ferocious battle. Let me see what else is on my sheet of paper. <laughs> oh, please. And what about Mauro gone? You didn't mention that. We mentioned that in the show previous. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, I still don't miss him, I guess. No. Sorry, I, Mauro. He was good on SmackDown, and then they moved him to NXT, and every spot in the match was just... Oh my God, and screaming and yelling and the stuff he would say and the stuff he would try to tie in with like the modern day culture, like with rap and hip hop and movie stuff. He loved tying in the rap music. Oh, oh he really my loved it. God. But and he's going sicko mode and all this stuff. Oh my God. His commentary just got so cringy, so just, oh, I couldn't even listen to him. Him I, and I Beth Phoenix are unbearable. And Beth Phoenix fought worse. I don't want to take oh, away yeah. from Maro's talents. I just think you cannot call every match every week as if it's one of the main events at WrestleMania. Or nothing stands out as being all that exciting. Everything you was, know what I mean? Everything was blending in together. Exactly. I love Nigel McGuinness, but he's going to be over in the UK doing I think that fits well. That stuff. Yeah. I'll say this. I thought Wade Barrett was pretty good. Barrett, I like. Vic Joseph, I like. Um, yeah, he kind of got cut really quick from Raw, which I thought was for the best. I think he needs to be seasoned a little more, but... I think those two together on NXT, it was a pretty good fit. I just wish, wish we could do away with the Beth Phoenix soundtrack. Well, they got to wait till her comment. I don't even know if her um, when that ends, that commentary contract with them. I'm sure it's pretty close to when Edge's wrestling deal ends. I uh, forgot about that. See, I forgot about Edge with this whole triceps injury, and he'll probably. When was the last time someone came back in a rumble back to back years? That's the thing. He might come back and back-to-back -back rumbles as a surprise entrant. And he also did the year he won it, didn't he? Yeah. He was a big surprise. Return, when was the last time so. someone returned in three different rumbles? It's just one of those amazing facts that no one really thinks about, and unfortunately, no one really cares about. I'm just saying, it's something no, I've thought about before. Fact. Yeah, yeah. Someone returning in back-to-back -back rumbles, you usually see eh, maybe one, you know, here. For that reason, I wouldn't do it. Even if he is healthy for the rumble, I'd save it for a TV show. Yeah. Because people will expect it. Remember how many people in Houston were expecting CM Punk to come out? Oh, yeah. That was, well, how many times is CM Punk the person that everybody picks? Well, the leader of a group whenever there's a vacant spot in a match? Whenever someone says, I'm going to pick my tag team partner tonight, yeah, but at least go to the WWE comment section on Twitter, Instagram, anything. Whenever they say, so-and-so is going to have an open challenge or whatever, what's the thing you see 90% of the time in those comments? It was he like Goldberg for two years after WCW. Every week, Goldberg was going to be on Raw. But at least <laughs> this year, the Punk thought had a little bit of credibility to it where he was on that. I don't even remember the name of it now. That FX show they did on Tuesday night. I forgot, I forgot that one, oh, no, too. No, it was Fox Sports. Fox Sports. The Fox Sports, at least he was on that and had some affiliation. WWE backstage. Do, there you go. <laughs> something to do with WWE at that point. But yeah. I think one or two surprises in the, maybe one big surprise a year. And I like to see a couple of legends fill in. I don't like seeing the NXT guys in it. 
The only person I would put in from NXT in the Rumble would be the champion. I, I think was just about to say. Earn that. I would say the NXT champion should always have a spot in the Rumble. And then the NXT women's champion as well in that one, even though they, I know you don't need, want to. No. The problem with that is they need a plethora of women from that, NXT because yeah. they can't fill 30 slots. And I remember in 2018 when they did the first one and it was all legends. And then all oh, the showings that they've had in the past three women's Rumbles have been atrocious. you got to like it or you're not PC. What are you going to do? I'm oh. sorry. I don't know how PC I am. But. No, I think one or two legends, the NXT champion, and one surprise return from an injury or, or return to the company would be kind of cool. Other I like than that. that, give the guys that are on the roster the shots. Just not the jobbers, right? Somet well, because sometimes they have these guys, like Mojo Rawley, you see coming into the Rumble, and it's just like... I'd rather have them fill it with top guys and not just a bunch of filler people. I would have made it, honestly, a 60-man rumble 20 years ago. Really? Had someone come out every minute. Well, and then, I, it wouldn't be, the, I would say maybe 40 or 50. 60 is a little overkill, but. But how do you even out the numbers? What do you mean? Well, it was like, okay, the year they did 40 men at two minutes, that was an 80-minute rumble. I'd rather it be the hour. You can't really plan it that way. But sometimes it's not always two minutes. Sometimes well, you they can, shave. They shave. Sometimes if there's nothing going on in the match, they'll shave yeah, off they'll a little just, bit. But then right, sometimes, I remember in this Rumble, I think I said to you, I said, this is way longer than two minutes. It was when, I believe, Keith Lee came in, and they were doing the spot with Braun and Brock Lesnar, the three of them. That went way over two minutes. Was it? I, I didn't have the stopwatch out, Giuseppe. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. You keep going. But I believe Hello, it, it's just sometimes in the Rumble it feels longer than two minutes, and then sometimes you'll have someone come out, and then the next person will come, and you're like, that definitely wasn't two minutes. So that's why sometimes in the Rumble it's not always Well, we're you know, in the middle of taping right two now minutes, as, as we said, speak. I'll as he talk talks to him as soon me. as we're done. All right, buddy. Bye-bye. So Mr. The, USA, Tony Atlas, ladies and gentlemen, getting he, ready for his. He'll be here within five minutes, so uh, almost perfect time. Okay, all right. So we're about to wrap up anyway. But as I said while you were on the phone is, Sometimes you sit there in the rumble and they're doing spots or whatever, but then you suddenly realize you're like, this is longer than two minutes. And then sometimes someone will come out and then the next entry and you're like, there's no way that was two minutes. Because they do mess with, you know, the times a little bit. I don't think every time, I think they just say, all right, start the 10 now. I don't think they actually time it out every single entrant. I no. think they kind of play with it a little. When they get bored. Like, yeah, you know, when it gets them. bored, just send someone just out. Just send them. But then if they have, like, the spot with Braun and Keith, and they want to, you know, use that a little longer. So I think they hold off on that a little. Because they know if it's bored, fans are waiting for the next person, so they just send someone out. But they know if the fans are engaged in whatever the spot is, they know people aren't thinking about the two minutes because they're not going to be like, oh, this is, this is longer than two minutes. Because they yeah. know most of the fans are. Laser focus. Laser focus, yeah. yeah. But those are all my notes for NXT and AEW. Unbelievable, fans. The time has come and gone again. Another quick fire, almost Royal Rumble entry-like edition of Wrestling Insiders. Fill in the blank. We look forward to your suggestions for the name of this show. We look forward to all of you fine folks that can help the cause by any means necessary in the Super Chat to your right. That wonderful little gray button with the dollar sign symbol helps us in so many ways. Keep the lights on to the studio, and we've seen them go off. Several times this <laughs> summer, unfortunately, literally. But uh, for Matt Dagnan, I'm Dan Marotti. Don't forget, every Tuesday night, it's Wrestling Insiders at your house at 9 p.m. We have a premiere on YouTube where we chat away. Thursday nights at 9 with Marty Gennetti. We do the same thing. It's always a party with Marty and his no-holds-barred sex, drugs, and rock and roll trip through the 80s and 90s in pro wrestling. We're going to have a Friday show coming up soon. The night of Clash of Champions, Brutus the Barber Beefcake is back after the Clash of Champions watch along. It's gonna be a big fall headed into an even bigger winter with the ninth annual Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. We can't bring you a live event, but we're gonna have a super cyber event that's it's gonna take weeks with all we have going on. I already said for him, for me, be well, stay healthy. We'll see you later in the week. Good night. Yeah.